What's up everybody? Welcome back to the build room tonight. Talk some more transmission tech talk. Tonight we're specifically going to talk about fluid temperatures, what is acceptable, what is not acceptable, and a good operating range for a different level of trucks. So jumping right into it. In my opinion, unless you live in an area that is extremely cold, uh, like Fairbanks, Alaska, or some crazy north part of Canada, where it's getting negative 30 uh, crazy cold temperatures on a regular basis, then other than that particular scenario, you really can't run a transmission too cold, in my opinion. Now remember, we're specifically talking about 47, 48 stuff here. So when you get into some of the more electronically controlled transmissions, uh, that is when the temperature actually will start to matter because if it's too cold, it's gonna change the way that the computer controls it. But on 48, 47 stuff, especially anything full manual valve body, the cooler you can run them, the better in my opinion. So if you have a higher horsepower truck, uh, something 1,000 horsepower and above, something that is mainly a weekend warrior type of deal, I always recommend to delete the heat exchanger. If you have a second gen truck, as long as you don't live in a really cold environment, I also always recommend to delete the heat exchanger. The second gen ones are really bad about this. They can crack and bust the heat exchanger, and when it does, the coolant mixes with the transmission fluid. You never want water or coolant in your transmission. It'll delaminate the clutches, it'll burn up the transmission, and it'll do it really quickly. If you drop the pan on your transmission because it's acting funny and it looks like a strawberry milkshake, it's probably too late, but that's also most likely what happened is the heat exchanger has busted. If you have a third gen truck, uh, this isn't normally nearly as common with those, but once again, as long as you don't live in a super cold environment, I always recommend that you do a bypass on those as well. When it comes to reading the fluid temperature, you're pretty much always going to read the fluid temperature from the pan. The pan is basically where the factory is getting its reading from. It's using the transducer to get that reading. An aftermarket gauge or an aftermarket pan is going to have a port in the bottom of the pan for you to get a good reading from there and that really helps to have a nice consistent place so that way when you're calling your transmission or your converter manufacturer and you're talking to them about acceptable temperatures you're all reading from the same spot in the bottom of the transmission pan there if you want to test how well your cooler is working or your coolers then you can put a temperature port right at the front cooler line. That's gonna read you the fluid that's coming out of the converter. That's gonna be the hottest fluid in the system. Remember that the only thing that heats up a transmission is the converter itself. There's nothing inside the transmission that's actually making heat. So if you read it from the front cooler line, you're getting the temperature that's inside of the torque converter. And then after the cooler in the bottom of the pan, you could have a sensor there as well. And then you can see the temperature drop from there. If you have a 40 or 50 degree temperature drop, you know, maybe your transmission cooler isn't working so great. Uh, but maybe if you have a 100 degree temperature drop, then you know that you have a good transmission cooler set up. When it comes to transmission coolers, I tell people that the location of the cooler matters far more than the brand and even sometimes the size of the cooler. If you're doing a standalone cooler, an aftermarket cooler, you always want to run a fan on those things. And the way that you orientate the cooler and the fan is very important. In my opinion, the best way to do it is to have air drawing from underneath the truck, nice, fresh, consistent air. And so you'll have the fan on top of the cooler and have the cooler mounted in a fashion to where it can suck that nice, cool air from up underneath. And then you wanna have a decent space between the top of your fan and either the bottom of the cab or the bottom of the bed floor. So that way that cool air can come through, it can heat up. And then as it heats up from where it's cooling it, that can dissipate as well. You don't ever want trapped or stagnant air. I know a lot of guys like to run transmission cooler in the bed of the truck, and depending on the configuration and how you do it, as long as you space it out, you can put them at angles. There's some things you can do to make those really work well there. I don't ever recommend putting them in the bed, mainly because you lose your bed space and it's uh, very easy to throw something in the bed of your truck or something gets loose crashes into your cooler and tears those things up. 
Uh, nowadays, like everything else, coolers can get very expensive. You can spend a lot of money on a cooler, and the last thing you want to do is tear it up because it was in the bed. And honestly, they just don't look that great there either. As far as a good stopping temperature, you don't ever really want a transmission to get over 200 degrees. When they do get over 200 degrees, and you continue to run them over for 200 degrees for a long time, bad stuff will happen. And I have a couple parts here that I want to show you guys of situations where transmissions have gotten way too hot and the things that they get tore up and why those get tore up. So let's check these out. So like I said before, the only thing that generates heat in your transmission is the torque converter. The cooler is going to regulate how much heat that the transmission sees. So a good cooler is going to do its job. It's going to protect the hard parts from that heat from the torque converter. Now, if you have a cooler failure, like what happened to this truck here, the converter starts to back all of that heat up into it and it starts to get very, very hot. As you can see, this converter has turned a nice ugly gold color and the snout of this converter is in really bad shape. This is actually one of the worst examples that I've seen come through my shop before. The paint on this is even uh, almost like, I don't even know how to describe it without feeling it yourself, but it's almost turned gummy and chalky because of how hot this converter has gotten. When this converter gets that hot, the fluid that comes out of this converter, like I was mentioning before, comes from the front cooler line, goes to your cooler, and then it goes to the rear of the transmission. Well, the first thing that gets oiled is this overdrive piston support and the intermediate shaft. So the oil comes into this through this oiling hole here, and that lubricates your intermediate shaft and your low reverse drum. Well, when you starve this of oil or get this oil extremely hot, it thins out and it can no longer lubricate this. So now your intermediate shaft is metal on metal to this aluminum piston support and it welds itself in here just like this one has. The low reverse drum does the same thing, rides on the aluminum piston support and tries to weld itself to it. This completely trashes the low reverse drum, the overdrive piston support, and the intermediate shaft. And the entire transmission has to come apart to fix all these things. It is a very costly mistake for letting fluid temperature get too hot. This here is a really extreme example of fluid temperature that got very, very hot and the owner just kept driving it and driving it and really did some damage. On this one here, this metal, because it created so much metal, went all through the transmission, tore up the valve body. That was an extremely costly repair. And this input shaft here was made it up with this converter here. And this is one of the finest examples of a burn up input shaft that I have ever yet seen. This is all a billet color like this normally and you can see how much heat this thing has gotten uh, we did not reuse this input shaft solely because this has had so much heat into it that this shaft is now brittle and i absolutely would not trust it that shaft actually got so hot that the heat alone warped the Belleville spring, flattened it out, and burned up the forward clutches. So when it comes to transmission temperature, it is extremely important. If you see temps above 200 degrees, or if your hot trans temp light comes on, pull over and stop. If you don't, you're going to be spending a lot of money. Beyond some of those hard parts there that I showed you, there's lots of other things that can get tore up inside the transmission from the heat. All of the thrust washers, all of the bushings, the pump bushings. You can actually tear up the pump gears and the pump body from the fluid thinning out so much from the heat. There's a lot and lot of damage that can be done from high trans temps. And the only thing that's going to keep your trans temps in check is a good converter and a good transmission cooler. If you have a race truck, you're going to be running a higher stall converter. The transmission is going to get hotter. That converter is going to generate more heat. There's nothing that you can do about that. You need the looser stall. The looser stall is going to create more pressure in there. It's going to create more heat. So this is why I preach putting fans on the transmission in between spool ups, making sure that you give the trucks adequate time to cool down 
between rounds. In a race truck application, for it to live a really nice long life, I never like to see that transmission pan temp get over 180. Uh, I like to run it in neutral until that trans temp starts to come back down with the fans on it. You need to start the runs as cool as possible so that way that they don't heat up by the time you've gone through the motions, you've done your burnout, you've taken the tree, it doesn't get too hot. I shoot for 110 degrees max of trans temp in the pan before I push up to the starting line. So that way I know that when I, by the time I start it, pull around the water box, do my burnout back up, I'm not gonna be over 130, 135. If I'm already 150 or 160 before I start the run, that thing is gonna be too hot by the end of the run. I never wanna see over 180, and I'm super anal with mine. At 150, 160, I start to get nervous with it, and I start to get it shut down or cooled off as fast as possible because the transmission fluid temp is truly the life of the transmission. And it's also the life of the fluid. If you are running your transmission hot, you need to service that thing a lot more than somebody like me that keeps it really cold. If you're a dirt drag truck, I know how they can turn those guys around super fast. They make you guys hot lap. It's a pretty big problem. In some ways, there's no way around it. You might have to add another cooler or two. A uh, really good cooler system in a dirt drag truck is pretty important. But if you are getting those things hot, you need to service those things every time you take them out. The fluid is the life of the transmission, just as much as engine oil is the life of your engine. So pretty much keep these things under 200 degrees. Keep them as cool as you want. Yeah, I've heard of some guys that claim that their transmission never gets over 100 or 110 degrees. That's fine. You're not going to hurt anything. You're not going to tear anything up from it being too cold. I know that there's some old automotive theories that you have to get it up to you know, at least 180 degree operating temperature to burn the moisture out of the transmissions. Uh, I personally don't buy into any of that. I believe that the cooler you can run these things, the better. So that's all I got for this one tonight, guys. Hope you guys find it helpful. I get a lot of questions about fluid temp, and I thought this would be a good video to help educate some people. Thanks for watching. If you're new here, click the subscribe button. And like always, we'll catch you next time.